Hello and welcome to Discussing Fitchburg Now. I'm your host, Sam Squalia. We have a jam-packed show for you this week. It's the first half, we're gonna have the Toastmasters on to talk about public speaking and, and off-the-cuff speaking in a fun way. And then we're gonna have Joe Bowen from the Fitchburg Cultural Council on to tell us about all the grantee awards. And then we're gonna have Debbie talking about uh, uh, Oils of Eden Wellness. All right, so right now, welcome. Members Thank of the, you, the Toast, Thank the you, Twin Fabio. City Toastmasters. Thank you, we have Dave and Steve and Dave. Right. All I'm, right. I'm a Dave sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about the Twin City Toastmasters, which is a, an organization that help people to encourage to learn how to speak public speaking. That's right. That's public right? speaking and communications. Um, Twin City Toastmasters is part of Toastmasters International, which is a global organization of 350,000, more than 350,000 people in 142 countries and I think about 160,000 clubs. 160,000? Uh, yeah. And that's throughout the world. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. I didn't think there were 142 countries. <laughs> so um, our region, our district in Central Mass, Eastern Mass, and Rhode Island has about 3,000 members and about 150 clubs. So we're everywhere. And Twin City Toastmasters is a club for Fitchburg and Lemonster, and we also serve some of Gardner out by where I live. Uh huh. So Fitchburg, Lemonster area. Mm -hmm. sure. When's the, where's the other closest club, um, Toastmasters club? Uh, there is one in Lancaster called the Wachusett Toastmasters, and there's a couple clubs in Worcester as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, Acton? I can't one in, remember. One in Shirley. Okay. It's actually out of the prison. Really? Yeah. The, there's members who go into the prison and actually work with inmates, and they have a club there. Huh. So. Well, got to learn how to speak well, no matter where you are. Yeah, right. exactly. it helps them a lot, so apparently. Mm. Definitely. And Part the Twin it. City Toastmasters has been a club for about 25 years, you said. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And right now you're doing it at the Lemonster Public Library, is that correct? Uh, the Credit Union. Oh, the yes. Right. The, the Lemonster Credit Union. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's Tuesday nights. Tuesdays, Tuesdays nights. at 7. 7, yes. 7 mm -hmm. to 8.30. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every and you're time. open to anyone that wants to... Learn how to Learn how to speak well in public and work on their communication skills. But, you know, a lot of people come to Toastmasters to get over the fear of public speaking. But it's once you're there and you overcome that and become confident, you can work on your leadership abilities and your management style and interpersonal communication that Dave has worked on. And I think it's really powerful if you're in business or an entrepreneur or working for a company or a corporation. We had a young man come in who wanted to practice because he was interviewing for jobs. And he got a job, yep. so that was really cool. Aha, uh -huh. that's, yeah. that's always a good story <laughs> that's to right. come back with. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So we have, we have a lot of fun in our meetings. We do uh, various things. We have speeches and people evaluate them and we're very encouraging. We also critique them a little bit and tell them what they need to work on. Somebody may need to work on their vocal variety a little bit or using body language or whatnot. And we also have fun things like a word of the day and table topics, which is talking off the cuff for a minute or two. Mm. And those are really great skills to learn because some people can get up there and do a scripted speech, but may not be so good at fielding questions from an interviewer. Right. Uh, do you do anything like whose line is it anyway? Uh, you know that the, the TV I remember, show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know they go up and they just have to do yeah. you know improv. Like improv, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, that a, is that anything like what you do? Yeah, the table topics. Yeah. Like table improv. topics. Yeah. You kind of it's kind yeah. of improving. Yeah. Just call somebody up and then they have to answer a question or uh, do something like that off the cuff. Yeah. Like last last night, our table topics master had um, license plates, and uh, as you picked up a blind. Um, license plate what kind of car would that person be driving what are they like and so that's what you did your one to two minute off-the-cuff speech about uh-huh yeah that sounds like improv yep. yeah hey Mike can we pull up the slides here we got yeah we got slides oh no nope, that's cultural console no, not that one <laughs> <laughs> 
There, there we go. go. Nice. There we go. So you're, you have a website, TwinCityToastmasters.com. Yes, yep. that will go to our website, and you can find us there. And we also, for our members, post our agendas there. So people can sign up for roles. So you can be every anything from a Toastmaster, which is like the MC of the evening, like Sam is doing right now. Yeah, OK. Or you can sign up for a speech, or to be an evaluator, or to be the table topics master, or the word master, or the joke master, or the thought of the day person, That's whatever you want to do. So you can area. hone your skills in different areas. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, nice. So how many people come to your meetings on a regular basis? Anywhere? So between 15 and 20. 15 to 20? Yeah. Oh, so it's a nice group. Yeah, it's a good sized group. It is, and we've been very fortunate with a lot of the work that Dave's done with public relations here recently to have more guests come in. So we're not only have been a, an existing club for 25 years, but we're adding new members of varying backgrounds and age groups, and so it really gives a great opportunity to hear different voices and different opinions on uh, speeches that you give. Oh yeah. Certainly, you can hear the same critique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't grow. Right. You can hear from other exactly. different points of view. Exactly. Like, oh, that's right. I never thought about that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what was last night's topic? Well, yeah. last night we talked about the license plates. Mm. The one I picked was "I am in debt." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm I picturing had. a sports car. Ha ha ha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ask? Ha ha ha. That was the license plate? That was the license plate, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we each had to speak to that. Did you have one? Do yeah, you I remember? had one. It was like, um, not baby mama. It was uh, <laughs> uh, mom's taxi. <laughs> mom's, <laughs> mom's taxi. <laughs> mom's taxi, that's right. Minivan. So I had to, yeah, minivan. Yeah. So. But it's fun. It, it forces you to really speak uh, off the cuff. Mm -hmm. And we have a few laughs. We, we have a good group. It's fun. Nice. Yeah. So you brought some cards and yeah, stuff? Yeah, would you some? like to play Word of the Day? Sure. And then we can do some table topics and try to incorporate. And we actually brought three words. We're in a friendly done. environment here, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So <laughs> the first word I brought is a fun word that I love, shenanigans. Shenanigans. Yes, which is a silly or mischievous behavior. It can also be an illicit behavior like financial shenanigans mm -hmm. that could land you in jail, but we like the fun kind of shenanigans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you the word... That, you could take that either way. Right. The word, <laughs> <laughs> the word master comes up and shows a little card like this and also um, uses it in a sentence. So David Mercier here has been the word master champion for the past several weeks and he's unbeatable. And mm -hmm. so the, the example is David Mercier's Many word shenanigans always win the day. So we're going to see if he can, if he can outdo everyone again tonight. Some people think there's some shenanigans with me knowing the words ahead of time. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there was no shenanigans planning this whole event, was there? Absolutely uh? not. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we have another word, if you like to. And this word is a fun word: kerfuffle. Kerfuffle. That's right, which can be a fuss or a rouse and often something that I get into with people having conflicting views. So <laughs> you never had a kerfuffle on city council, have you? I believe that there was a kerfuffle last night. <laughs> yes. Was it, was it due to anyone's shenanigans? I would say that this person that caused the kerfuffle might have believed that there was some shenanigans afoot. Ah, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> and another word is skedaddle. Skedaddle. So sometimes, you know, when we have to get out of out of uh, town quickly, or we have to, you know, get get out of a place if we've caused a kerfuffle with our shenanigans, we have mm. to skedaddle. So yeah, no, certainly, certainly la last night there at the city council meeting there, the, there might have been some shenanigans and <laughs> then caused a kerfuffle, and everyone was looking to skedaddle. There you go. Right. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. So this is so you kind of play these word games with everyone in the group. Mm-hmm. It's almost like live Scrabble. So somebody, even somebody. Even the, oh, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say the uh, the prepared speakers have a a speech that they're going to give, but the intent is to now take something that you've already prepared and interject these words into the discussion. Uh huh. And, um, Repetition gets you to, to use it 
more frequently. So Different words, you mean? Yeah, and learn some different things. Mm -hmm. So one, so you might come to a meeting with a speech prepared on a, a, a random subject, right? right? And then someone would say, you know, add these words into your speech? Or mm -hmm. how would that work? Well, you can. You can elect to do it. For instance, last night the word was immovable, I believe. And I got up and gave a speech about Toastmasters educational program and how it's changing over. And I should have used it, but I completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so I got brain freeze on the word of the day sometimes. But Mr. Mercier does not forget the word of the day. Mm -hmm. and he went up to you? Oh, I, I think he I think it was eight up eight you. up me, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had four. I used it four times. Mm. And somebody, the, the word, the of, the word day. of the day. You, you try, the, the more times that you can use it? It's like, yeah, it's like a contest. Who can use it most in, within the meeting? Mm -hmm. But Dave, again, he won. Yeah. So <laughs> the goal, yeah, the goal the is to He's the word master. expand your, your vocabulary right. a little bit and... Uh, Mellifluous was the word. Uh, mellifluous. A um, what does that mean? It's to um, speak uh, with. Um, uh, kind of like a lilting yeah. rhythm. Yes. You know, very oh. soothing, mellifluous tone. The opposite okay. of what I just did. <laughs> 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 but he used it, what, 11 times? Yes. Well, almost a football score. That's a tough word to use it in is. context. Oh my gosh. 11 yeah. times. He was very mellifluous that evening yes. with his word shenanigans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No one, did people want to skedaddle after, yes, you, uh, after the 11th mellifluous? <laughs> that was a bit of a kerfuffle. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we could also play uh, table topics sure. too and we can, we can maybe quiz our host and, and see how she does. And I'll Are try. you up for it? I'll try my best. I think she's up for it. All right, we'll give you a tough one to start. Do you think marriage as an institution is outdated? Okay, so I know what's the, what's the, the top, am I supposed to just answer yeah, it randomly? Yeah, answer that one to two minutes. Whew. Do I think and, that marriage as an institution is outdated? Well, you know, back, back in the day when, you know, I don't know how long, how many ye uh, centuries that marriage has been around, but, um, you know, back in the day people only lived to, had a, had a life expectancy of, much earlier age, I don't know, 40s, in the for life expectancy was probably in the 40s. So you only had a commitment of probably 20 years. But now that people are living to their 90s and 100s, the, the commitment of marriage, now we're talking about doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling the time commitment that we're talking about with one other person. Is that, is that an institutional, um, is that a change, you know, from, from back from the institution that we had back in the day to, to today's modern time, uh, I would say probably yes, because 50% of marriages end in divorce. So does the institution of marriage um, require some adjustment? Some people believe that it does. And you see that some people will do uh, different tricks um, to, to adjust their marriage. Yeah. Perhaps some shenanigans. <laughs> There's, Certainly a lot of shenanigans when it comes to marriage <laughs> with a lot of people. A lot more skedaddling. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, it causes, I wouldn't say, I'd say it's more than a kerfuffle when uh, there's shenanigans in marriages. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, if, and after that happens, there's 50% uh, there's of the time they skedaddle. Perfect. Got it. There you yeah. go. Right? Yeah. How'd I do? We should have brought a little <laughs> dinger or something. Yeah. For oh, what? Ding. Every time you use the word, right? Uh, I forgot about the words of the day <laughs> until <laughs> you said it. Yeah. Mr. Poles, did you want to do one? Sure. What is your opinion about legalizing marijuana? Well, it's happening already. Um, I think my views have changed over time. I'm um, a mental health and substance abuse counselor. So I think my training is initially I, I'm, I'm against it, but people are using it more and more, and um, I think it can be medicinal for some people. I know that might be controversial, but I, I think my views have changed. It, it's um, it's kind of. Um, 
what's a, what's a way to put it? I mean, um, contradictory or uh, hypocritical, like when you compare it to like alcohol, you know, mm. it's the same. Uh, I, I think like any other substance, if it's taken, if it's used um, responsibly, then I don't have a problem with it. I know some of my clients, I don't smoke marijuana, but I know some of my clients do, and uh, compared to medications that they've taken that are prescribed to them, uh, it seems like this is sometimes more effective. So I would say that I'm okay with legalizing it. That's not to say it shouldn't be taken responsibly, but that's my two cents worth. So we'll go through a series of these. I don't, do you want to yeah. you want to do another one or do you? How about a critique? A critique. How would you critique? critique? Do you critique these? We don't or? critique these, but okay. we, I okay. thought you did very well. Okay. And then once we threw the words of the day at you, you <laughs> jumped right <laughs> in and got it. those and. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so the the critique or the evaluation comes from the prepared speakers. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. then, it, so that is somewhat more off the cuff than the prepared speakers and that you're not you don't know who you are evaluating or what type of speech you're evaluating um, going into the meeting so it's off so the critiques are off the cuff Is little, that what you're yeah so you're taking notes during that and it's probably a greater opportunity to use the word of the day um, during that part of the the meeting uh -huh. so you That's can try to true. use this word of the day throughout every part of the meeting he's, he's crafty with could. it ah, yes. yes so it's it is important to uh, again that repetition really allows you to to expand your vocabulary and keep the shenanigans up and keep yeah. it to a minimum <laughs> so there's no kerfuffle <laughs> and no skedaddling yeah. yeah people want to hang out that's right do we have more table topics we do we have a bunch would you like to do one okay what is your opinion about violence in tv movies and video games oh gosh I'm against violence in TV and movies and video games. That's why I only watch public access TV. <laughs> Good answer. Um, Good answer. Steve. But actually, I, I don't really watch a lot of violence on, <clears throat> on TV because I can get that from the news, really. And I would much rather watch an independent movie with some pretty scenery that you can drink in the scenes and get a nice drama, and that's just me. But you know. My wife doesn't mind the violent movies, so, so we kind of flipped roles there. And, um, you know, but, but some violent movies, too, if they have a good story and if you can relate to the character, I can still watch Die Hard and relate to Bruce Willis, even though I've never had that bad of a day. So, you know, he certainly got into a big kerfuffle with with uh, that scene and had to skedaddle and then skedaddle some more and skedaddle some more. I said, I got three of them That's in there. That's right. And, and uh, but I can relate to that, so. That's what I think about violence. I think it, we shouldn't have as much of it on TV as we, as we do. So it's supposed to be random, but I'm going to pick my own here. And it's uh, a good way to lead into Would you our, like me to ask you our Toastmasters Club, which is how do you think technology such as smartphones and social media has changed the way we interact with people? So Toastmasters is an opportunity to, to have more interaction with people, to develop those speaking skills as opposed to sitting and texting or emailing, um, and that you're apt to be more brave with some things that you're saying if you're uh, texting and can cause a kerfuffle. Mm. And There's certainly a lot with, of shenanigans on social media. I was going to say, <laughs> with all of the different uh, apps that you can, or websites that you can into, you definitely can get into uh, some sh shenanigans that would uh, cause a potential kerfuffle mm. in your personal life. So um, it is a great opportunity to, to meet new people, to speak off the cuff, to really work on those skills to be able to interact with folks either in a personal or a professional manner. So that's my, my continued plug for Toastmasters as part of the, <laughs> our discussion. Perfect segue. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So say we're, we're interested, we want to join Toastmasters, we want to come see what's going on. How do, we, how, do we, how do we come? Can we come as a guest? Can just come as a guest, just show up. Mm -hmm. 
And that's 7 p.m. every Tuesday at the Lemster Credit Union. Right. Mm -hmm. Get there at 6.45. 6.45. socialize for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the start of the meeting at 7. Okay. And it, how long does it go? Till about 8.30. Mm -hmm. Then we skedaddle. Mm -hmm. We skedaddle. After 8.30. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now after you visit uh, once or uh, is there a cost associated after that? There is. <laughs> the um, membership fee over the course of the year is $120. $120 for a year. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we do that in um, either prorated up to two points in time where we do a six-month um, membership. Um, in addition, there's a $20 uh, initial member fee. Mm -hmm. So over the course of the first year, it would be $140 for the opportunity to speak several times through a meeting and really hone your skills. Again, um, whether it's giving prepared speeches to clients or uh, co-workers or merely working with your boss or meeting somebody in the store and having the opportunity to to develop those skills. To learn how to, to exercise your ability to speak comfortably in a comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. Right? There's not a lot of judgment or no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> judgment free. <laughs> not, no, judgment. no judgment at all. No. There's feedback. There's feedback. <laughs> So constructive criticism. Constructive Absolutely. criticism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we tell a lot of new speakers who are still kind of afraid to get up there is, you know, people aren't there to judge you. Mm. You know, maybe judge your message, but they're not judging you, and they want you to succeed. So you should take heart in that. And if you care deeply about what you're talking about and care even more deeply that the people go away understanding that, it makes it a lot easier. And you can get up there, especially if you have a passion for something, like Mr. Mercier has a passion for the word of the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and he can perform his word shenanigans again and again. That makes it easy. And when you have games like Word of the Day and, and maybe a joke and some other things, it, you know, it's fun and it's, humor is a great way to learn. Right. And uh, you're, not just writing, you're, you're not just writing speeches and giving them. You're actually doing fun little games with each other, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're making friends. Mm -hmm. Making friends. Yeah. And I love the idea to do more improv. Maybe we should try to do some comedy improv. Mm -hmm. What did you call that? Uh, um, with the license plate? It was part of table topics. Table topics. Yes. That was, was that just what we just did? Or? Yes. Yes. Yes, we did. Uh -huh. So that there are no rules to what the topics are. Somebody may pick a topic and everybody talks about the same thing, or you may get a, a mystery list. And a mystery you, question. And you don't find out until you stand up and have volunteered. Uh -huh. And then the shenanigans begin. Yes. So you might go around in a circle and everybody talks about the same thing in a different way? Could. Possibly. If we wanted to be mean and pick on people. But it's usually a volunteer, so someone will raise their hand and, oh, and okay. go up there. So sometimes the new people are a little shy and you know, they want to check us out first and you know, they'll rarely get up on the first meeting and maybe the second meeting they'll get up for 10 seconds or so. And, and we, you know, we encourage them to do it more and more. Yeah, so, it's, uh, so you can go and you don't have to participate. No. No one's gonna force you to speak. No. It's you can come and just observe. It's totally at your own speed. Mm -hmm. But we will encourage you. <laughs> yes. Like, would you like to speak? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. not today. Like, okay. And another thing we do is we time the speeches. So you may have an assignment, well, not an assignment, but a project to work on through one of the manuals or through one of the paths that you can choose to kind of study or learn in Toastmasters. And um, through through that you can you know just get more comfortable speaking so there's different paths that you can take yes huh? we're changing our educational program through Toastmasters International we're getting away from the old manuals that we've we've done it's going to be more online and there are 10 paths so you've got things like innovative planning and strategic thinking and visionary communications and persuasion and influence and it's almost like a college major where at first all the paths are the same and everyone learns the same thing and then after a couple levels it gets more into the kind of discipline that you're looking to do and you can have some electives mm. elective projects and one of the really nice things about the new educational program is as you move up through the levels you can 
kind of combine that with what you're doing at your work or your place of employment or your business. So for instance, I may do a high performance leadership um, program through some of the work that I'm doing in my town to build some marketing. Uh -huh. And you people. could use that as some of your, your experience for your path. Exactly. Hmm. So I can kind of kill two birds with one stone, mm -hmm. but not violently. <laughs> this is it a violent thing? <laughs> that would cause a kerfuffle. Yes, if you really did that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. So I could go to like city council and I could just talk about shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Shenanigans. Enough of your yeah. shenanigans. <laughs> I, I, I get on it like, hey, what do I do? That's right. <laughs> yep. Yep. That would be, that would, there would be a lot of shenanigans if I did that, though. That would be a kerfuffle. Yeah, be a kerfuffle. If I started yelling shenanigans. Yes. <laughs> they make you skedaddle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, great. Well, we have a couple minutes. Anything else you'd like to add? I'd like to tell the audience about the Toastmasters. Anything we missed? Gosh, I The Twin know. City Toastmasters meets 7 p.m. Mm-hmm every Tuesday at the Lemster Credit Union. Oh, there it is, 20 Adams Street, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Yeah, and we have a lot of fun yeah. and a lot of laughs. Come on in as a guest and observe, and if you'd like to join, it's $120 for the entire year, every Tuesday, 52 weeks. 52 weeks. 52 every weeks. Tu every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. And it's less expensive than taking many online courses as well, so it's a mm. great thing to do for your life, really. Mm. Meet friends and influence people. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming, the members of the Twin City Toastmasters. All right. So we're going to cut to a short break where we're uh, talking with the Disability Commission, and then we'll have our next guests on. We'll see you then. Thank you. Hi. Sam Squally here with members of the Fitchburg Disability Commission, and we're talking about some upcoming events that the Fitchburg Disabilities <laughs> Commission's hosting. Yes. Why don't we talk about uh, your first event that's coming up on Saturday? Is the Accessible Art Studio Painting Class. Yes, it is. It's going to be this coming Saturday on March 3rd from 1.30 to 3.30. And the location is going to be the Arc of Opportunity. That's on Main Street in Fitchburg. And I want everyone to know that all abilities are welcome mm -hmm. to come. So this is an accessible art painting class that's free to the public. Right. Yeah. And this is uh, funded in part by the Fitchburg Cultural Council? That's right, yep, yeah. which is supported by the Mass Cultural Council. Great. Right. And this yeah. is the second year you've done this, right? Yeah. 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 Last year you had a big turnout. We did. Big success. It was very successful. Yeah. yeah. It was good, yeah. So it's like a free painting class is open to all abilities any yeah. anyone at all does this oh yeah. and we have something this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be doing like a, a winter landscape with birch trees oh and then you know i did like three or four different yeah. paintings so there's different backgrounds that people can do and different things so yeah. Awesome. yeah they can do their own thing on it you know yeah. it's, uh, they don't have to do it exactly right like i that. give them like ideas and they'll all look a little different they will yeah, they, they do. always do yeah yeah so it was really good yeah and then you'll be able to showcase these paintings that you do march 3rd at the at the arc of opportunity at the disability fair that's coming up March 28th March at right. Monty Tech yes. yeah. from 3 to 7? From 4 to 7. <laughs> 4 to 7 p.m. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's talk about the Disability Commission Fair. Okay. The, the yeah. Disability Awareness Fair? Uh, the disability Resource Fair. Resource yes. Fair. Awareness Resource Fair. Correct. Yes. And this is our third year of doing this. Um, in the past, we've had uh, over 30 different uh, organizations coming and, and displaying at their tables. Uh, and it's open to the public, no charge, and there's no charge for the organizations to come either. Oh, so if you're an organization that services the public, that Please helps. call us yeah. and, and come, yes. Yeah, you can set up a table. And we have yeah. an email for, for people to contact for the Disability Fair that yes. we can pop up on the screen. And so this is Wednesday, March 28th. At the uh, at Monty Tech, Tech from Monty four Tech. to seven p.m. Yes, right. And right. it's free and open to the public. Yes, it is. And you can come and yep. see what different resources are available in the community. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And we have yeah. events going on at the fair too. Oh, yeah, there's gonna have there's door prizes. Door prizes. Door prizes. Yeah. 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 And there's all kinds of door yeah. prizes. I'm very yeah. lucky. Oh, good. Well, well come well, on over. Come on <laughs> over and see us. Yeah. And uh, there'll uh, be lights. Some entertainment too for the kids. Entertainment and refreshments. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. All right. 
Well, thank yeah. you so much, Bill Tolos yes. and Carolyn Quirk Correct. from the Fitchburg Disability Commission. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank See you, you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm here with Joe Bowen, the chair of the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Good. We're going to talk Sam. about the Fitchburg Cultural Council, and we're going to talk about what's upcoming, what we can expect to be happening in the cultural scene in Fitchburg. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. So this year, um, where the Cultural Council has been getting, it's been growing in popularity. Um, we've been trying to do a lot more publicity about the different events and things that we have going on in the city. And um, what I thought we'd do, if it's okay with you, I just want to quickly go over what the Cultural Council is, really quickly because we're really short on time, and then jump into all the events that we have um, coming up or have already passed. That sounds good to me, Joe. All right, well, let's do it. So um, the state legislature appropriates a certain amount of money every year to the Fitchburg Cultural Council uh, for the purposes of um, events for arts, humanities, cultural um, things and such like that. and. The cultural councils, all local cultural councils have public input meetings where they can uh, find out what the public wants for events and functions and things within the city. We take all that information, we build up what our guidelines are going to be for grant applications. We publish the grant applications during the grant season. People apply, then we go through this arduous process of going through tons of applications and reading details and budgets and trying to figure out what meets the guidelines, then how many of those are worthy of funding, and then we figure out how we're going to fund. So, um, to give you a, a, a hint as to how this season was, we did, we got um, 62 applications. And, 62. Yeah, which is nearly 20 more than the prior year. Wow. So that's, that's this great. giant this Bible book we have here of all the applications that came in. Uh, a total request of 104,000 dollars. 104,000 requested, and how correct. much do we have to give? We only had 32,000 dollars to give. 32. Yes. That sounds like more than last year, though. It's slightly more, but we um, some grant funds weren't paid out um, because the events oh, right. didn't happen. So right. we were able to lump them onto the funding that we did receive, which was actually level funded from the prior year. What twenty? Which is 000? it was about twenty six thousand. Twenty six thousand. Yeah, and um, it looks like we're on track to be level funded again. That's what's being proposed, but uh, the the legislature has to vote on that um, when they conclude the budget right. um, later this year. So uh, we were able to grant out of the 62 applications, 47 of them. So there's 47 great things that are happening because of the funding that we've been able to provide um, through the Fitchburg Cultural Council. 47. 47, yeah. So 47 events or public art or things like, for example, uh, the, the painting at the, uh, the accessible paint day at yes. the Ark of Opportunity. Yes, that that's That was correct. funded by the Cultural Council. That's correct. Last year as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So um, if it's all right, I think I'm going to start with just the events that are going on. To, so people, these are things that are open to the general public. Most things are open to the general public, but they're usually in different niches and groups like schools uh, for the public school students and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are the more the big ones that the wider audience that you have here would be interested in. So um, I kind of have them in category. So in the art category, um, there are, there's four events going on that the um, art museum is going to be a transforming perception, perceptions of cultural heritage through image. Um, that's a photography exhibit. Um, the art museum also is going to have the 83rd Regional Exhibition of Arts and Crafts. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so you, part, you help fund that. Through yes. the Cultural Council. Yes, that's correct. Mm. And uh, Jerry Beck from the Revolving Museum um, is putting together his project SOAR, and his stuff is always fun. The He's got a world's largest, largest paper, paper airplane. airplane. I can't so wait. that ought to be interesting uh, to see how that goes. Uh, there's also uh, Fitchburg State University Foundation is uh, sponsoring a, with us a, a written, uh, the written word. It's a celebration of the book. So it's a literature um, event. event. Mm -hmm. Um, we are uh, providing funding to Fitchburg Civic Days, which pretty much everybody in the city knows what that's all about. And, the best uh, event in the city. That's the right. July. And it's better this year. The best year. event in the region, yeah. actually. We've been told it's even better this year. There's more funds even being given in year. and raised and mm -hmm. in order to do a, a spectacular show, so I can't wait for that. Uh, the Juneteenth celebration is um, occurring in, uh, on June 16th this year at Riverfront Park. We also did some funding for the holiday lighting ceremony for mm -hmm. the holiday decorating committee, which is in the Upper Common around Christmas time. Um, this one was really great. I, um, I, I love seeing the unique stuff that comes in. So we're doing, uh, we gave some funds to do a geocaching workshop. 
Whoa. Um, up at the Crocker Reservation with the North County Land Trust. And um, for those that don't know what geocaching is, it's kind of like a scavenger hunt that mm -hmm. you do and you go around, you find different things and there's, there's sometimes little trinkets under a rock or inside a tree. Or, you interact yeah. with the things yeah. for the next person. Yeah, exactly. You so. funded, I saw an email from the North County Land Trust that you funded the Owl Prowl. Yes, yes, that's right. That was on my list. That was one of the past ones. Owl Prowl is awesome. It was great. There's like 80 people yeah. all in the woods, quiet. Yes. Listening to the owl, and then listen, then there's like an owl call. Mm -hmm. 80 people silent in the woods. Right. Something you never, you've never imagined. I know. It's great. Everybody behaves well in those. <laughs> <laughs> Even the kids. Um, there's uh, also will be a uh, Marion Rice historical dance event. And uh, Marion Rice, as I understand it, used to teach dance in the city of Fitchburg many years ago. Nice. Yeah. Um, there's also, um, under the humanities, uh, there's an event, uh, Samuel Holton comes to Fitchburg, um, trapped in a southern prince prison, this is at the Historical Society, uh, it's Fitchburg's Civil, Civil War thing. Discussion. Discussion. Um, uh, the organization Breakthrough Silence is doing their healing arts and uh, it's called Go Day, which stands for Growth, Overcome, and Empower. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really nice event that's usually held over that's a, at that's the library like and the art Day museum. That's a National Day designation. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. Kanisha, she mm -hmm. does an amazing job. That's right. Um, Maria Vesquez does her true story once a month. It's, oh. a, it's a, a poetry, spoken word kind of night. Everybody gets together and it's a safe place to just talk about whatever you want. And, and where is she uh, doing that now? Um, she is still working on the locations. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I have the word, we will be posting that. In fact, all these here, uh, we will be advertising on our Facebook page and our uh, Facebook group. Oh, yeah, the Fitchburg uh, Cultural Council has a Facebook page, and the Fitchburg correct. Cultural Council has a Facebook group. Yes. yes. We also have an email address. Mm -hmm. We have a slide for that a little later when we get uh, near the end of the, okay. the segment, or we can put it up now. Yeah. And... Um, Oh, there it's, it is. It's that one. Yes, that would be <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that uh, Kanisha does is her My Care Initiative uh, is uh, Lit to Life. It's a literature um, event. Um, there is also going to be an event. This one's at the Historical Society. It's called Circus Lives On. It's the story of the Wrangling Brothers. And, really? Um, yep, and a review of their, the circus when it used to visit Fitchburg. Oh, is that going to be an exhibition or is that going to be a uh, talk? Um, I think it's going to be a talk, if I remember correctly. Either way. Yeah, if we that have time, I'll go through the book, but I'm not sure. Because they came to Fitchburg, yeah. the Ringling Brothers. Yeah, I think I saw a picture of the tent on Summer Street. Yeah. Maybe it was Lunenburg. I'm not sure where. It was close. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's also... Actually, uh, I, see, I remember a picture of elephants walking down Main, down, uh, Main Street in Fitchburg. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's uh, also John Root is a uh, performer who performs at the Senior Center every year. Um, is a, he's a favorite. His uh, program is called The Celebration of Song. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's also the summer concerts that are being held, that are held at Cogs Hall Park. Yes, the Cogs Hall Park, on, those on are Sundays. Sundays. Yeah, yep, Sundays in the summer, um, as well as the Fitchburg Military Band. Oh, yeah. Uh, we also did, provided some funding for them. Oh, great. How many, how many uh, concerts are the Fitchburg Military Band doing? Uh, I, think like they were, I think they were doing four, great. if my memory's right. I don't have Those it right here. Those are awesome. Here. Yeah, they really are. Mm -hmm. And I'm you glad we were able to. You can go to Cogsall. You can set up a chair and a picnic table, a mm -hmm. picnic area, and what, just listen to the music. Right, mm -hmm. right. Oh, here's some pictures of um, some events. Oh, there's the there military are. bands on the top left. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and on the on the top right is the Civic Days yeah. celebration. Oh, uh, the Blacksmith uh, Festival. Blacksmith right. Festival at the bottom right. The Farmers Market in the middle and the bottom. Oh, you do mar you do music at the Farmers Market. Yeah, that's on the on the list too. There'll be uh, bands playing, uh, musicians playing while Third, people are shopping that's for food. Thursday starting in June. Correct. July. Starting in July. It's July through October, I yes. think. Yes, yep. 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 Thursday starting in July. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, image that was there was the, um, it was just a, a true story event, the people that went to Maria's. Oh, um, Maria's yeah, event at Maria. the main cave. Correct. Which will be somewhere else. Yes, it definitely will be somewhere else. I just don't have that information yet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We got the concerts on the common. Those are Wednesdays all summer long. Mm -hmm. um, I have... Um, inside information about the uh, concerts. I can't give out all the details. Okay, what do you got? Uh, but I have been advised that the, there's a theme this year. It's going to be called Honoring the Legends. Honoring the Legends? Like, the, uh, like the Beatles or something? Yeah, things like that. So um, the I can't imagine that there won't be a Beatles band. 
really. The Beatles made you know, I haven't been told there is one, but they're always a hit every year, so oh, yeah. I hope that they're going to be there. But the, uh, they're going to kick it off with a band called Ton of Blues. And okay, they'll be doing blues. They'll be doing uh, post-war Chicago blues music. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that should be a, a good time, as always. Um, let's see, we talked about the farmer's market music. The... Um, there's another performer, his name is Tommy Rowe, a uh, real popular uh, performer that plays at the Civic Center every year, and uh, he, he does a program called A Musical Journey Through the Years. <laughs> so that'll be coming. And uh, this one was, is, is good. This is a new addition that I haven't seen before. There's a, a, a guy named Ed the Wizard. Ed the Wizard. Yep, yeah, he's going to do an alchemy laboratory. Ooh, um, turning at, things into gold. Hopefully, that would be nice. <laughs> this is going to be surprised at the, we haven't got that technology down yet. I know, right? <laughs> That'll be at the Fitchburg Public Library. Awesome. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that. But uh, I got a list of events that have already happened. If we've got time to yeah, go through, funded or? that. Well, we have about two minutes. So okay. let's just let's just go. The, let's just talk about the, the grant the grant process itself. Yeah. So you know, but the grant season opens October first. Correct. If you have an idea for an event or an art piece or a humanities project or a science project, mm -hmm. you can submit an application to the cultural council. You don't need to be an organization. You could be an, be an individual. Mm -hmm. You can submit an application right online, right to the Fitchburg Cultural Council, and mm -hmm. your grant might get funded. That's or correct. if you've done a past activity, you might be able to apply for reimbursement for that. Mm -hmm. If you had out-of-pocket expenses that exceeded your what you thought it was going to cost and mm -hmm. it's something for the public benefit. So in part of what you said, you mentioned reimbursement. Mm. We are in a pilot program with a few other cultural councils in the Commonwealth where we're, we're trying out the elimination of the reimbursement. And instead of ha having these folks conduct your event and then get paid back for it, we're going to give you the money up front. Right. And then, you know, we have a, a lot of folks that want to do events here, but they don't have any money. And they, they're they coming to us to raise that money, um, and they would really need it up front in order to make it happen. And what it used happen. to be was you apply for it, and it's like, okay, you hold the event, you pay mm -hmm. for everything, and then we'll send you a check in three or four months. Right, right. So now it's like, here's the check, go have fun, do your thing, and then just make sure you send us the receipts that you spent it all. Whatever you didn't spend, you have to just give it back to us. It's, it's great. Totally reasonable. And, and you know, we, uh, we just approved all of our grants in January, and we've paid out already about almost 65% of them. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah. So the, the Cultural Council, the Massachusetts Cultural Council, which, which you know, supports the Fitchburg Cultural Council, mm -hmm. supports all these projects and all these bands and all these events that George has listed, and more than I'm sure he didn't because there were oh, 42. Oh, Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we didn't get to them all. Nope. So this is a, definitely a needed thing. This is definitely a great thing that we do here in the community. And Fitchburg mm -hmm. Cultural Council was the number one Massachusetts Cultural Council like two years ago, right? That's correct. Number one in the yep, state. Yeah, we voted number one. Yeah, maybe next year we'll be number one. That's what I hope. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Anything else you want to add? Um, can I just talk about uh, one in particular that I liked, which was unique? It just happens to be your project. Sure. Which was the... Uh, the uh, sidewalk painting yeah. that uh, uh, it'll be, be a, it's kind of invisible yeah. paint until it rains. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it'll be a rain activate rainworks activated art. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, that'll be a hydrophobic it, spray that you spray pen stencils, and when it rains, yeah. like things will appear. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be in the planning phase soon. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Joe, for thank coming you. on Fitchburg Glad Cultural Council. You can follow that on Facebook, Fitchburg Cultural. Fitchburg MA Cultural Council on Facebook, or mm -hmm. you can go to the Fitchburg Cultural Council Facebook group, and you can learn more information. That we also there's also a website. If you just search online yep. Fitchburg Cultural website, Council, you'll find it. Email. There's yeah. no excuse for being unable, unable to reach us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank okay, you. Okay. So we're gonna take just like a quick break, and then we're gonna have Debbie, and we're gonna talk about oils and wellness. All right. Thanks. Welcome to Inside Fitchburg. I'm your host, Alex Cardinale. Inside Fitchburg is, is pretty much a showcase of, the, of that work um, that folks are doing. A lot of conversation is, is really being steered in a really positive direction, and more is being found out, I feel, you know, now, which is really exciting stuff. Hey, we're back. I didn't have a microphone on. Uh, live TV, everybody. I think you're one of the examples of what the city really needs, and that's you know young, energetic folks investing. 
You guys look great for 150. Do what you love and you don't work a day in your life. Inside the actor's studio with James Lipton. If you haven't, James Lipton is a He's an old guy with a beard. And what Pittsburgh is, is a lot of really good people working toward a better future for the city. He had just some lemons or peppermint. And welcome back. We have Debbie from Oils of Eden Wellness, correct? Yes, yes. that is correct. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, so, talking about oils. Yes, I see that you brought some here. What do we got? Lemon? Lemon, yes, it's very, it's one of the most versatile oils. It's very popular, it's very uplifting this time of the year. You can clean with it, you can cook with it, you can, you just need to know um, the quality of your oil and the grade of your oil. There's food grade, perfume grade. So as long as you have that type of information, you can, the possibilities really. Perfume grade and food grade, mm -hmm. what's the difference? The difference is perfume grade has been extracted and they use it specifically in perfumes. They um, will not have as much of, they're somewhat adulterated, whereas they aren't as pure. So there's different ways to do the oils, the distilling processes and the heat. It's gonna be low temp and things like that so that you can actually still benefit therapeutically from the oils themselves. Mm -hmm. So food grade, they are um, obviously approved by the FDA for being added into food as flavoring. And so when people say essential oils, I am never gonna do anything with that. You do actually in things that you eat now all the time, you know, mm -hmm. different flavored lemonades and things like that. There's, so, uh, there's essential oils in a lot of the food that we eat already, is that what you're saying? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, the the quality of the ones that we work with, it actually, they are approved for ingestion, which is... Young um, Living? Yes. This is food grade? That's, um, that's a food grade, and that's also a therapeutic grade where we do some specialty modalities that actually help people. And, um, you know, so we work with people on all different kind of levels as far as the particular technique that I wanted to bring to your attention, the aroma freedom technique. It works to help people, um, you know, remove blockers and different things when they want to reach a goal or they want to just find out why they're kind of stuck in a spot. You like know mental I mean? blockers, is that like what you're saying? Like mental blockers, mm -hmm. yeah. So they have a couple of different techniques and it's really neat because there's a lot of different types of or groups that it can be effective with uh, they have a memory resolution technique which is good for those with addictive behaviors and things and past traumas and you know why some people do what they do they may not even know you know what is that underlying cause so it helps people to get really at that root level you know and be able to overcome some things so they can move forward so would you be use? how would you, you be using, I, I assume you're using combinations of oils mm -hmm. in certain, um, um, now how, what kind of technique are we talking about? Are we talking about like diffusing it into the air and just breathing it? That or like it, massaging it or? When you inhale oils, that is aromatherapy. That is what that is. That's the definition of it. So this aroma freedom technique is because your sense of smell is hardwired into your emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, you can smell an apple pie and think of your grandmother's house. You can smell a flower and spring's coming, you know, all those different kinds of oh, things. Oh yeah, it Im immediately triggers areas in your brain of memory. Yeah. Exactly, so there is a certain group of oils which Dr. Benjamin Perkis, the psychologist who's been in the field for 20 years and using a oils in his practice for 15 years put this together to help people be able to you know release and have that freedom from whatever's holding them back so that is an inhalation by actually um, putting a couple drops in your hands and just smelling and breathing in and just taking those those times and it's a, a process where you know, I've been certified and took the class to be able to walk people through the process. Through the aroma freedom technique. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so this is like a, a therapy technique using oils in addition to 
to other things, yeah, that people may do, exactly. Some of the other groups of people that this particular technique is good with is um, people with very high stress jobs. Sometimes you have like your first responders or your firefighters or something that just, you know, being at that level of job, they may need some, you know, just some kind of something that can help them remove themselves from their everyday stress and just mm -hmm. kind of help them relax and things like that or like, even think about the beach and then you're breathing in a beach smell like yeah that. and you're going through the process and so then when you need to de-stress just breathe in the beach smell like oh yeah that's right at the beach exactly okay. exactly because it is that that smell association mm. you know that does work in with the limbic system in the in the brain so the limbic system um hmm. so you can so like i know uh, uh, they say to put peppermint right here if you have a headache. Mm -hmm. Would that... you like to smell the peppermint? Sure. Because we have that one with us. It is um, very strong, so with essential oils, little bits go a long way. Mm -hmm. And that is actually helpful. Looks like my toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will help like a cup of coffee if you're taking a long drive or something, or if you have to drive at night, you know, um, It'll help keep you awake? Exactly. Peppermint. Without mm. um, having to stop anywhere. Mm -hmm. So so if you get food grade or essential oil, then you can use that on, on in everything. Is that correct? You can use it, um, yeah, for flavoring, additive, or, um, yeah, if you're cooking. So you get the flavor from it. Oh, okay. So you wouldn't... What do you use for breathing? And there's different, the different grades. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you wanted to start using oils, do you just go, do you just buy food grade? Is it the best grade or? The, um, the best grade for an oil is one where, you know, you kind of have to know where, like with anything, where it's coming from. So as you'll notice, these have dark glass bottles that mm -hmm. they are stored in and that is a good way to tell that you are buying a good grade oil. Mm -hmm. The processes for extracting the oils through steam distillation, it, um, it will um, totally lost that. <laughs> The different level, the different grades of oil. Yeah, the some ways that you can extract, extract right. the oil. So there's a lot of research that's been done on how and when to extract the oil and how to so that you can have the most yield and the better benefit. And sometimes it takes a whole lot to get a little bit of oil. Mm. Like it takes fifty thousand pounds of rose petals just to get like fifty liters of oil. So that particular oil is expensive. Right, and I would so, imagine. Yeah, if you go and you see it in a, a clear plastic bottle somewhere and it's got a very, very low economical price, you know that it's mostly not fake. pure. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. Right. So what do you, so you, you um, your business is Oils of Eden Wellness. Correct. Yeah. And what, and how can we find that on the internet? You can find me at oilsofeden.us. oilsofeden.us, that's E-D-E-N. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we are located right at the junction of 117 and 495 in Bolton. We are essential oil therapies, so I have an associate that also we train and we work and we do things together, um, both to further the education of people that want to learn, you know, the goal is to get the understanding mm -hmm. out there so people aren't confused. There's a lot of schools of thought when it comes to aromatherapy mm -hmm. and oils and things. So what kind of ailments um, do you treat generally? We work with people in this emotional realm and try to guide them and work them through the process. And if they need something additional, we always want to make sure that we have information available to them so that they can, you know, get to the right sources that they may need, you know, medically or, or whatever. Um, so stress related. Mm -hmm. and, um, Detoxification, those kinds of things. Addictive we, um, problems with, with addictive personality traits or whatever it is. To be able to help them release and move forward and not just kind of cover up with something, but actually want to do something else. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's been very interesting. There's a lot of testimonials from a lot of people that, 
you know, they didn't expect this good to come from it or that good to come from it or, you know. Um, and how often do people come to you? Is this like a weekly uh, treatment that you, you usually do or? With some of the emotional things, it will be like, you know, for a, a certain period of time, you know, like once a week for X amount of, of weeks and then kind of maintain after that and get to a yearly basis. Or some people will come for one of the relaxation techniques and come once a month, you know, like it's different from massage, you know, but it is body work, so. You do body work as well? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's some specific techniques there. We're having a class tomorrow on um, the oils and this particular technique and people will come and will provide education. They actually get to go through the process. So you'll do regular events at your at your place? Yes, um, yes. We try to do monthly things, try to change it up, make and takes, you know, workshops, different things like that. So we can find us on Eventbrite and and go to oilsofeden.us and you'll have your events there. Yes. Nice. Yeah. All right. So, and, and if anyone wants to learn more about what you do, they can find the Aroma Freedom Technique book. Correct. Yeah. This book is, it's duplicatable. They have a step-by-step -step quick guide if it's something that, you know, sometimes people would like to do something like oh, that. Let me hold it up to the camera. Yeah, where is the camera? There we go. The Aroma Freedom Technique by Dr. Benjamin Perkis. Correct. Yes. And that's and this is largely what you what you practice. That is one of the um, newer modalities that we practice, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you do other other oil body work. Yes. Yes. All right, great. What's your favorite flavor? what's your favorite scent? Do you have a favorite? Is that I, a thing? I have yeah, it's a thing. The oils are a thing. I have a group of favorites, but I think um, some of the, the blends I typically like that are, they're uh, light, not floral, but I like a lot of the citrus. Um, mm, lemon. Lemon, lime. I like lime a lime. lot. So use it when I cook, make homemade salsas and different things. Oh, and, yeah, like mango. Mm -hmm. mm. And add that lime in there. So I think the citrus. I used uh, oil on my uh, daughter's, I had a diaper pail when I did cloth diapers. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'd use lavender essential oil. Mm -hmm. and now every time I smell lavender oil, I think of my daughter's diapers. There's that <laughs> I mean, connection. like that. And you know, one time I was trying this lavender cheese at a place. Oh. And I was like, oh, this tastes just like my daughter's <laughs> diaper pail. I was like, wait a minute, that did not come off right at all. It's like, no, I mean, I used to smell this oil. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it proves the power of our sense of smell. Oh, and yeah, how I mean, every time I smell it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So I could see how you could use oil with, with therapeutic techniques and, and train your brain, you know, to, to, to remember things or whatever. And you could use that oil to bring you there. Yeah, and good or bad, and it can help release negativity as well as help to solidify the positive with affirmations and things, so that's... Say good things to yourself while you're breathing in this smell, and then when you breathe the smell, you're like, you feel you positive. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Follow. All right, so we have a few seconds left. You wanna add anything else, how people can reach you? Yeah, through the website or, um, let's see, what else? I'm always available by phone, text, Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Oils o of Eden Wellness. Oils of Eden Wellness on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And um, hmm. we're upstairs from a great coffee shop. You can come on by, get a cup of coffee, and wander upstairs where the essential oil sign is. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks, Debbie, from Oils of Eden Wellness. You can find that at Oils of Eden. Dot us. Uh, this has been Discussing Fitchburg Now. Thanks so much for watching. All right.